All right, guys, we are now done with yarns and we're going to start fabrics. <clears throat> so first we're going to focus on weaving and then we're going to cover knitting and we will also learn about some of the other uh, fabric construction techniques. When we talk about fabrics, we are talking about any planner structure that is pliable enough to be made into three-dimensional products, or clothing and apparel and other products. Uh, so fabrication is the process of making fabrics. Now, fabrics are not just made out of yarns. We can also use solutions. And when we use solutions and we um, dry or coagulate them, we get films or foams. And those are planar structures that we can call textiles or fabrics. Uh, we can make fabrics directly out of fibers. And in that case, you create felt or fiber webs or non-woven fabrics, for example, diapers or interfacings and so on. And we can make fabrics out of yarns. So we can braid to make fabrics. We can knit, we can do lace, uh, we can make woven fabrics and many other kinds. And we can also make composites. And composites are when we are combining different type of uh, construction methods and creating a fabric structure based on that. So you can combine solutions, fibers, yarns, and create some type of composite fabric or composite textile. The three most common fabric types are woven fabrics, knit fabrics, and non-woven fabrics. Woven fabrics are produced by interlacing yarns. And you, when you look at a woven fabric closely, you can see that there are yarns in this direction and then there are yarns in that vertical direction and they interlace with each other. So when you look at the edges of these type of fabrics, they can unravel from both sides. But knit fabrics only have loops because they are making the fabric by interlooping the yarns. And it is a lot harder to unravel this kind of fabric. Uh, when you're unraveling, you have to open up the loops so you can only unravel it from one direction. Non-woven fabrics are made directly from fibers. So you can see fiber webs when you look closely to the fabric. So you don't recognize any kind of interlacing or interlooping pattern. So these type of materials are made out of non-woven fabrics. So you see that there are no yarns here. It's directly made out of fiber webs. Now we are going to focus today on woven fabrics. Uh, there are two kinds of woven fabric uh, construction methods. There are the basic fabrics. Those generally use the basic weaving patterns. And these are a lot simpler to make and they require simpler weaving machines that you can use to make any of these patterns like plain view, basket view, rib view, twill, satin, and so on. And then there are novelty fabrics. Novelty fabrics are a lot fancier fabrics and they require special machines and they also uh, require extra yarns sometimes and they uh, make really novelty textures and fabric structures. When we talk about the quality of a fabric, we usually look at whether there are any defects or any kind of uniformity in the fabric. Um, how does it perform when you use it? Uh, and to understand whether there are defects, there are visual uh, inspections that we do. Sometimes people do that. Sometimes there are computerized systems which will um, go through the entire fabric to find any defects. And we grade fabrics based on their quality. And we also test the performance at the end. All right, so let's start with woven fabrics. This is one of the most widely used methods uh, and it has so many possibilities. You can unravel yarns from the length or the width of the fabric. Every woven fabric has a grain. Uh, they're relatively stable fabrics, so they don't have a lot of stretch like knit fabrics do. 
Woven fabrics will be different based on their, uh, the size of the yarn, the twist on the yarn, uh, the type of fiber we are using. Uh, there's a um, fabric count that we talk about. So this is how dense the yarns are on the woven fabric, the color, the design, the finish. So all of those will affect your final woven fabric. Um, when you use different interlacing patterns that gives you different texture and different look on the fabric. And we use woven fabrics in everything, apparel, furnishings, industrial products. Woven fabrics are made out of two sets of yarns. So there are yarns that are in the vertical direction and then there are yarns that are in the opposite direction. Uh, the warp yarns generally run parallel to the salvage of the fabric. The filling yarns are the yarns that we use to go uh, above and under the warp yarns when we are making the fabric. So filling yarns, we also call them weft yarns or picks. Those yarns are at 90 degree angle to the warp yarns, okay? And the selvage is the edge of the woven fabric. Uh, so when you are making the fabric on a weaving machine, you will see two outside edges and they usually have little pinholes because on the weaving machine, they stretch the fabric from the edges and there are usually pins that hold the fabric together. So you always have those pinholes. So when you look at the edges of the fabric, that run parallel to the grain of the fabric. Those are called salvages. So we have warp yarns and weft yarns, okay? Warp yarns are in a certain direction. Warp yarns are usually in the direction of the grain and the salvage of the fabric on each side would be parallel to the warp yarns. The filling yarns are the yarns that we um, go above and below, you know, above and under the warp yarns to create an interlacing pattern. So the way you go up and down the warp yarns will determine your pattern. This is a weaving machine in a very simple way. So you have a warp beam and this is where your warp yarns are prepared. So you have to prepare this to create woven fabrics. And this is a lot of preparation process. So you actually have to create this beam by putting every warp yarn perfectly parallel to each other. And you set them on a big beam like this. And then you have to carry the warp yarns, go through the harnesses, make it perfectly parallel this is your shuttle. This is a hand loom, by the way. This is the most basic system before they came up with a motor and automized the process. So the shuttle looks something like this, okay? And you have your weft yarn or filling yarns in here. And your filling yarns stay inside and you push the filling yarn above and below the warp yarns to create your pattern. And when your shuttle pushes your weft yarn or filling yarn through across, so you're actually weaving your fabric as this goes across. The way the yarns are going to be positioned will depend on your pattern. So the harnesses help to create your pattern. So if you want to go one up, so your filling yarn goes one above the first warp yarn and under the second warp yarn and above the third warp yarn, under the fourth warp yarn and so on, then this is called a plane wheel. To make it easier to make that kind of pattern, what you can do is your harnesses can help you pull up every other warp yarn. So by pulling the harness up and pulling this one down, you are creating an opening here for your shuttle to go across. And every time the shuttle goes across, your fabric is being woven. So this beam will start picking up a little bit or turning slightly 
to wrap the woven fabric on itself. And as you keep moving, this beam is releasing warp yarn. This beam is taking up the fabric and you have your finished fabric here. Now, before you get to the weaving step, we said there's a lot of preparation for weaving. The first thing you have to do is you have to wind all of your yarns onto those big bobbins. And then these are going to be placed on a creel. This is called a creel where every yarn is placed and then every yarn has a channel. So you pull up one yarn from each of these bobbins. And this is a creel right here. So each of those yarns are pulled out and made parallel and then wound on this beam. And this is the beam that we used here to make woven fabrics. So uh, if you look at this video, it actually shows you the production of denim fabrics. I'm gonna play that video. Illustration. The weaving process starts with the sized yarn coming off the loom beam in a single sheet or layer of yarn. The yarn then proceeds over a tension or whip roll that is designed to maintain a constant level of tension on the warp yarns throughout the entire weaving cycle. Each yarn then travels through its own drop wire that serve as stop motion detectors. When yarn tension drops too low or when the yarn breaks, the metal drop wire will complete an electrical circuit and the loom will stop. Next, each warp yarn then passes through its own pedal that is suspended in the harness. The heddle has an eye through which the yarn passes and allows for exact control of each yarn. The harnesses control the raising and lowering of the warp yarns. The yarns then proceed through the dents of the reed. The reed is a comb-like device that maintains the spacing of the warp yarns, controls the width during weaving, and performs the beating up of the filling yarn into the body of the cloth. The point where the yarn is beaten up into the cloth is called the fell of the cloth. This is the transition point where the yarn becomes fabric. The cloth now winds over the take-up roll, sometimes called the sand roll or press roll, which, when combined with the let off of the loom beam, controls the number of picks per inch in the fabric. Finally, the cloth is rolled onto a cloth roll. The threading or drawing in of the yarns can be done manually or automatically on drawing in machines. Of course, manual drawing in is much more time consuming. So shedding is opening up that shed, that opening for your shuttle to go through. The second step is uh, the filling insertion. So you're inserting the filling yarn or the weft yarn into the um, shed, we call that picking. The third step is beating up. So this is pushing the weft into place with the reed. After beating up, the fourth step is take up. This is when you are starting to wind your finished fabric onto the fabric beam just slightly. So guys, this is a shuttle loom. So you see that she's uh, opening up then the harnesses move up and down, and then the shuttle goes across. And so every time she's inserting the yarn, you see that she's moving the reed, she's pushing the reed to push the filling yarn into the fabric. This was a hand loom, and people used to do that by hand, but then of course there were a lot of advancements. So somebody came up with an engine or a motor where you just push the shuttle automatically. And then nowadays there are all kinds of weaving machines. Uh, there are machines that work with computers that are air jet weaving machines, which push the yarn uh, directly with air jet instead of using the shuttle. Um, and then there are all kinds of other methods. So these are different kinds. So in an air jet machine, you have a nozzle and your yarn is just a single yarn that is just pushed by pressurized air into the shed. And these machines are super fast. They can produce fabrics very quickly. 
Uh, there are rapier looms, water jet looms, projectile looms. Now, again, your warp yarns are always parallel to your salvage and your grain line. So your grain line, your warp yarns, your salvage, these are all in the same direction. Filling yarns are perpendicular to the salvage. So if you see something like this, you know that this is your salvage. Uh, and sometimes your salvages are smooth like this. Sometimes they have fringes. Uh, it really depends on the kind of warp weaving machine that you're using. So that's the salvage. Those are your warp yarns. These are your filling yarns. Okay. Now, um, these are different types of fabric. So if you look at this fabric, the edges are not fringed. They are smooth. So that means this is a shuttle loom because if you have a shuttle, the yarn is carried this way and then it turns around and comes that way. So your salvages are going to be very smooth with no fringes. But if you have a weaving machine, like an air jet machine, for example, in that case, you're not using a shuttle. You're just blowing the yarn into the shed every time you do a filling insertion or picking. And what, it, what happens is at the end, once your yarn is inside the shed, you cut the edges of the yarn. So in that case, you get fringes on both sides of the fabric. This is another one with shuttleless loom, and you can see the fringes here. Because with the shuttle, this yarn would kind of turn around and go into the shed again the next time. But in this case, every time you insert the filling yarn, you are cutting the ends of the filling yarn. Since we prepared those warp yarns very parallel and we put a tension on them, so they are super tight. Uh, in, because of that, we don't have a lot of elongation in the warp direction of the fabric. But in the filling direction, you will have a little bit more elongation and stretch. Fancy yarns are usually not used in the warp direction because warp yarns have to be really parallel. It has a lot of tension so that can break uh, novelty yarns because novelty yarns are not very strong. So we always use those novelty yarns in the filling direction as filling yarns or weft yarns. Warp yarns are generally smaller, more uniform, have more twist because they have to be very strong and they have to withstand a lot of that friction. But the filling yarns are a little bit relaxed inside. So because of that relaxation, when you pull filling yarns, you will see that there's a lot of waviness on the filling yarn. So woven fabrics have a face, which is the right side of the fabric, or a back, which is the wrong side of the fabric. Some fabrics are reversible, so they may look the same exactly on the face and on the back. This is a denim fabric, and the denim fabric usually looks blue on the face, but if you look at the back, it has more of those white yarns showing. But for reversible fabrics, you can't really tell because the face on the back looks exactly the same. A balance view has the same size yarn and the same number of threads in one inch in each direction. So if you count all the yarns in the warp direction in one inch, and if you count all the yarns in the filling direction in one inch, you find out that uh, you have the same number of warp yarns and it's the same number of filling yarns in that one inch distance. Uh, that's a balanced view. Uh, if your fabric has an unbalanced view, that means the number of yarns in the warp direction and the filling direction are not going to be the same for the same distance. So here's a good example. This is a balanced fabric. So if you measure, let's assume um, this is one inch right here, and you count how many yarns you have here, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight yarns in this direction. And then you calculate, let's say one inch here, and you're counting the, uh, yarns in the other direction and you have eight. So in one inch you have eight yarns this way and you have eight yarns this way. That means it's a balanced view. This is also a balanced fabric. But in this case, it's a little bit different. So if you 
count one inch here versus one inch here that are way more yarns in this direction in the same distance versus in one inch in this distance. And that's, all, uh, that's also how we calculate yarn count. Yarn count is basically uh, how many warp yarns do you have in one inch plus how many filling yarns you have in one inch. So for example, in a fabric, if you count all the warp yarns in one inch and you get 72 yarns, and then you count all the filling yarns in one inch and you get 66 yarns, then we write 72 by 66 and we call this your yarn count, okay? And we always put the warp yarns first. So in this case here, we are gonna assume this red line, this is actually half an inch. There are about 36 yarns if you count in this direction. 36, you have to multiply it by two because it's only half an inch. You have to calculate how many yarns in one inch. 72 is in this direction. So this must be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 33, 36 yarns. So we have exactly 36 yarns in this direction, in that direction, okay? And if you multiply it by 2, that's 72 yarns. So you have 72 warp yarns. If you count these, you get about 33. So 33 by two is 66. So in one inch, you have 72 warp yarns and 66 filling yarns. So your yarn count would be 72 by 66. The width of your fabric will depend on the machine. There are some weaving machines that are 45 inches wide. There are some weaving machines that are 60 inches wide. When you go to Joann's or other places to buy fabric, they usually have two different widths, 45 or 60. And again, that means that the machine that makes the 45 inch fabric is only 45 inches wide. And the other one is 60 inches wide or very common for cotton fabrics, for wool fabrics, the width is a little bit higher because the machines are a little bit bigger and wider. So you can get 54 inches wide or 60 inches wide. And for silk type fabrics, it's actually much narrower. So you have 40 to 45 inches width. Um, the fabric mass, we calculate that in grams per square meter or ounces per square yard. And what we usually do is we cut one meter square or one square meter of fabric and put it on the scale and we calculate the grams. And that gives you how heavy or how light a fabric is. So lightweight fabrics are generally less than four ounces per square yard. And heavyweight fabrics are more than six ounces per square yard generally. So medium weight fabrics are, you know, most fabrics are medium weight. So it, it's between four and six ounces per square yard. The green is the position of warp yarns to filling yarns. So your green line is always in the direction of the warp yarns. And if a fabric doesn't have a very straight green, we call it off green. That's usually a defect. We sometimes call it skew if the yarns have a certain angle to the warp, uh, or we sometimes have a bow, which means filling yarns do not cross all warp yarns at the same angle. When you're naming woven fabrics, we have so many different names for woven fabrics, broadcloth, uh, jacquard, um, poplin, gingham. Uh, there are all these different names, Oxford. So the naming, uh, depends on the structure of the fabric or the weaving pattern, the weight of the fabric, sometimes the type of the yarn that is used, whether they are balanced or unbalanced, and what kind of finish do they have on the fabric. In a plain weave pattern, when you look at the cross section of the fabric, or if you're look, looking at the fabric from the side, you're going to see that these are your warp yarns. So these are actually the yarns that are going in this direction. And then your filling yarns are going 
one above the warp yarn or below the warp yarn, above and below, above and below. And in the next line, if it went above in the previous line, it goes below in the next line. And then it kind of does the same thing throughout. So this is a plain view where if you follow the yarns, you can see it goes one up, one down, one up, one down kind of thing. And then the next one just um, alternates. The twill fabrics usually have a different pattern. So it's going one up and then two down, two up, one down. And if you look at the next line, it's two up, one down. Sorry, two up, two down, two up. So this one is actually a two by two twill view. So it's always going two up, two down, two up, two down. But in the next line, it kind of shifts one yarn and then it repeats two down, two up thing. So in a twill view, you usually have a diagonal uh, look on the surface of the fabric. The satin fabric is generally, it makes a lot of floats. So when we talk about floats, that's when one kind of yarn, one direction of yarn is going above a lot of other yarns. So these are big floats. And in a satin view, you see those yarns floating and then it's only interlacing in, let's see, every five yarn, it's only interlacing one time. So, so let's start talking about plain view. Plain view, we also call it tabby view. Um, this is the simplest interlacing pattern. And in these fabrics, the face on the back of the fabric looks the same. They are reversible fabrics. So if you want to make this, you know, you kind of have to, if you were doing this, you would have to just create this here, you know, so it goes kind of one up, one down type of thing. And it's like a checkerboard design. Rib view is a variation of plain view. And what you do is uh, you go three up here, for example, this is a three by one rib view. You go three up, one down, three up, one down, three up, one down. But on the next line, you're alternating. So if you went three up here, you went, you go three down, one up, three down, one up. And so we call this a three by one rib view. This is what I'm talking about. These are the lines you're going to notice on a rib fabric. But again, rib fabrics usually have the same face and the same back. They are reversible fabrics. And if you want to, uh, experiment this here with uh, what I have here for you, two by one rib view. So in this case, you would have uh, one down, two up, one down, two up. And then in the next line, you're going to alternate. You're going to go, actually, this would be like this. So you would go, like this and this is a two by one. So you go two under one above, two under one above and so on. And then in the next line, you are doing the same thing. You are still going kind of like this. Basket view is when you have two or more yarns in each direction that are treated as a set. So instead of going one up, one down, you go two up, two down, two up, two down. It's just like the plain view, except you are using more than one yarn as a set. So you're, you're, you can do two by two basket view. You can do four by four basket view. This one here is a four by four basket view. So you have four yarns that are kind of acting as a set and then four yarns uh, in the warp direction like this. So in the twill view, um, if you follow this pattern, you have 
your filling yarn going under two warp yarns and then above one warp yarn, under two, above one. But in the next one, it's not alternating. If it was alternating in this direction, you would have this filling yarn go above this one, right? Because you, have, you go under these two, it would be going above these two. But if you do that, then you get a rib view. But in twill, you don't do that. You kind of shift one. So every time you go to the next line, instead of alternating exactly, you are actually shifting one yarn. It's actually kind of uh, shifting in this direction. So if you look at this filling yarn, it's above this warp yarn here. In the next line, it goes above the next warp yarn. In the next one, it goes above the next warp yarn and then it repeats the pattern. And that's why you get a diagonal view. So if you look at the surface of the fabric, you always see these diagonal lines because that's what your eyes can see. Okay, so whenever you see diagonal lines, it's a twill pattern. If the direction goes in the left-hand side, we call it a left-hand twill. So here, for example, if it goes in this direction toward the right, then we call it a right-hand twill. If the warp yarn goes over and under the same number of yarns, we call it even-sided twills. Uh, if they are not going over and under the same number of yarns, then we call it an uneven side twill. So for example, in this case, you see two above, two under, two above, two under, and then they shift one, two above, two under kind of thing. Uh, this is a even-sided twill. In this case, you don't have a very e even-sided twill because it goes two, three above, two, three under, two above, two under, one above, one under. And the angle of the diagonal lines uh, can also give you an idea. So this is called a reclining twill. This is a regular twill. This is a steep twill where the diagonal lines are more steep. Uh, this is a two by two twill that's even sided. This is a two by one twill that's uneven sided. Again, denim fabrics are generally twill. They have those diagonal lines, you can see those, but they are not reversible. Let's say the black is the indigo color. So the black is gonna be more visible on the face of the fabric. But if you look at the other side of the fabric, you know, wherever you see this black, it's gonna be all white in the back of that fabric. So you see more of the white yarns in the back. Uh, versus in the front. This is a three by one left hand twill. Satin fabrics are kind of similar to uh, twill, except uh, they don't shift just one yarn. So you don't really see any diagonal lines and you see a lot of floats. And when I say floats, these are long yarns that are not interlacing for a long time. So for three yarns, there's no interlacing. So this is a float. This is a float. This is a float. So when you see a lot of floats, the fabric surface actually looks a lot shinier. It reflects light more because there's no interlacing. So satin fabrics generally have a little more luster because of that. Uh, if the warp yarns are the floats on the face of the fabric, we call it a warp faced satin. If uh, the floats are more in the filling direction, we call them a filling face satin. So satin fabrics, you see, if you look at the fabric, you don't see diagonal lines necessarily, or at least these lines are not attached like in twill. Twill fabrics, these diagonal lines, kind of the corners of these diagonal lines will be um, touching in a twill. But on a satin fabric, there is no diagonal lines. You just see that kind of structure and a lot of floats. So because of the floats, your fabric surface looks much smoother. This is a four by one warp face satin. So the uh, floats are more in the warp direction and it goes four uh, under one above kind of uh, design. 
And you can see the luster on this fabric. Now there are satin fabrics and there are satin fabrics. The only difference between the two is basically the type of yarn or fiber that you're using. Satin fabrics are made of filament yarns and they have a lot more luster and shine, but satin fabrics are made of spun yarns like cotton or more natural, so they don't really have as much luster as satin fabrics. Satin fabrics can also be made out of rayon, polyester, acetate, silk, uh, but with satin, satin fabrics, you use more natural fibers and cotton especially. But they all have the satin weaving pattern, okay? Again, these are two different uh, satin patterns, but this one is a satin, this one is a satin, and you can see this has a more natural look, so it's probably made out of cotton, this is more shine and luster, it's probably made out of polyester. Lightweight plain weave fabrics, so a lot of sheer fabrics are in this category. Ninon, gorget, chiffon, wale, organdy, organza, those type of fabrics are lightweight plain weave pattern fabrics. Um, opaque ones are like lawn, batista, china silk, chalice. Those are also made out of a plain weave pattern, but they are not sheer or transparent. Uh, and then there are low count shears. So these are some examples. This is a ninon, chiffon, gorget, organza, and so on. This is how those fabrics look. These are lightweight fabrics made with plain weave, but they're opaque. So Batista, Chalice, China Silk, Habitai is the name of this fabric. Um, those are also lightweight and plain weave patterns. Uh, these are very low count shear fabrics. Uh, and when I say low count, that means there are a lot less yarns in one inch than a regular woven fabric. So cheesecloth, for example, um, buckram, crinoline, gauze, you know, those are uh, very low count sheer plain view patterns. And then some of the medium weight stuff, I'll just show you like um, print cloth, percale, please say, embossed, shins, polished cotton, true crepe, muslin. You know, these are some of the medium weight plain view patterns. This is a gingham, this is a chambray, uh, and these are, you know, muslin fabric, you know, it has that raw color, flannelette, you probably know flannelette. And uh, if you look at your textile kit, you have examples of each of those fabrics. And then when we look at some of, some of the heavyweight plain view fabrics, those are usually suiting fabrics. Um, they use coarser yarns. They are more resistant to wrinkling. Um, so burlap, tweed, uh, Osnaburg, flannel, those type of fabrics. So this is called crush, this is a burlap, this is an Osnaburg, this is a tweed, so more heavyweight fabrics. Flannel, uh, butcher cloth, weaver's cloth, so you can see some examples of those in your textile kit. Rib design fabrics, uh, like broadcloth, taffeta, shantong is this one here. Um, these are some of the lightweight rib fabrics and then some of the heavyweight, oops. Some of the heavyweight rib fabrics are like poplin, dandelion, ottoman, bedford cord. Uh, this one is bedford cord here. So you can see, um, the difference between those fabrics. Uh, basket weave fabrics, this is a monk's cloth. This is an Oxford cloth here, usually used for shirts. This is dimity, this is also a basket weave. Canvas fabrics are made out of basket weave pattern. Um, sail cloth, duck, uh, those are all basket weave fabric names. And then twill, um, there are fabric names you will hear for the even-sided twills, like uh, serge, 
twill flannel, shark skin, herringbone, houndstooth. This is a houndstooth twill um, because of that pattern. And then warp faced twills can be like denim, jean fabrics, uh, chino, gabardine, um, and so on. Okay, so those are the fabric names. I want to show you guys this video where they're making a twill view pattern. So you are setting your blue yarns as your warp yarns. So you have to kind of glue them up top. And these are uh, going to be your, this is your warp direction. And then the yellow paper that she's using is like the uh, filling yarn. And she's going two up, two down. So this is a two by two twill. And you can see that it is two up, two down, two up. But on the next line, she is shifting. Okay, she's shifting in this direction. So now, um, if she's going two up here, she's going two up here, she's going two up here, two up here, two up here kind of thing. So you see how she's shifting. So um, this is how you're creating a twill pattern. So when you go to your eye textiles, you will see some nice pictures. This is a hand loom for hand weaving. This is more of a mechanized weaving machine. And these machines work super fast. So the fabric is being made really, really quickly. This is a comparison of woven fabric, knit fabric, and, and non-woven fabric. I talked about fabric width. Um, these are different types of fabric widths that you can see. This is a 45 inch wide fabric, 30 inches, which means you know this fabric is folded in half. So it's actually 60 inches wide. And this one is a 62 inch wide fabric. So the width of the fabric is determined by the weaving machine. This is an off grain fabric, this is a grain defect. So when you look at these kind of fabrics, their grain line is not so straight. You can see these lines are kind of coming down, uh, which means you know, it's a little bit off grain. So the filling yarns are supposed to be 90 degrees to the salvage and they're not. So this is one of those uh, problems with the grain issues. This fabric is skewed. Um, so the warp and filling yarns are not perfect, perfectly perpendicular to each other. You can see kind of they're uh, going at a different angle. This is another off green fabric. So when you put a line through it, you know, it doesn't come straight. So your uh, grain is not so straight here. So these are different uh, patterns. This is a plain view, this is a twill, this is a satin fabric. These are all plain view patterns. Yeah, depending on how thick your yarns are and what kind of yarns you're using, you get different uh, fabric structures. But all of these are using the plain view in interlacing pattern. Uh, these are some Examples of rib fabrics, this is a broadcloth, this is poplin, canvas. This is an ottoman, bangaline, fell. These are examples of some basket view fabrics. Uh, this looks like it is, if I can see it, it looks like a three by three basket view. This is a two by two, this is a two by two, this is a three by three, this is a four by four, and so on. These are twill patterns again. Um, this is a twill fabric, but this fabric is called hound's tooth because of the uh, design that is created by the interlacing pattern. Herringbone is another twill design and herringbone has these like uh, little zigzag movements on the fabric. But again, remember, this is not a print on the fabric surface. This is completely created by the uh, interlacing pattern. 
So these are different 12 years. This is a herringbone, 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 herringbone. They, these are all herringbone twills. Um, this is a flannel back satin. One side is going to have more luster than the other side because this side uses filaments, this side uses spun yarns. This is a satin weave fabric here. Okay, so I'm going to end it here and we're going to talk a little bit about fancy or novelty fabrics next.